Alexandra Holden is one of those actresses. She had everything it took to make it big in Hollywood, the beauty, the charm, and of course the talent, but for some reason, just like many other actors and actresses, she just didn't make it. That's not to say that she didn't find some success, of course she has some notable, even iconic performances, but she never was a huge actress. After watching the classic dark comedy American Beauty, naturally I felt like watching more Amina Suvari films, so I chose the 2001 teen comedy heist movie Sugar and Spice. This is what introduced me to Alexandra Holden as she played the supporting character Fern the Terminator Rogers. Her character stayed mostly quiet and wasn't given much to do in the film, but Alex did good with what she had and was obviously really cute, so that was incentive enough to start my journey through her filmography. Alexandra's breakthrough, and to date the role she's most famous for, is that of Elizabeth Stevens on the sixth season of Friends. Her character was a university student who dated her own professor, Ross Geller, for five episodes. Alexandra's stint on the show was well received, and Elizabeth, as well as her father, played by Bruce Willis, have gone on to be two of the show's most beloved guest stars. Prior to her role on Friends, her only notable performance was a small but funny appearance as the anorexic beauty pageant contestant Mary Johansson in the 1999 mockumentary film Drop Dead Gorgeous. After her big break on Friends, Alexandra moved on to bigger roles in theatrical films, starting with the previously mentioned Sugar and Spice in 2001. For a teen comedy, even one that's also a heist film, Sugar and Spice had a sizable budget of $27 million. Upon release, the film was not well received. It bombed at the box office and got mostly negative reviews from critics, who sometimes compared it to then recent box office hit and current day classic Bring It On, which sucks because it's a really good movie. Not as good as Bring It On, but it's a fun, fast paced film with a cast of enjoyable characters. In 2002, she starred alongside Michael Weston in the forgotten slasher film Wishcraft. Long story short, the movie sucks. But if you ever need a reminder of why Alexandra Holden deserved better, Wishcraft is perfect for that because she carried the entire film on her back. Her next big film came that same year in the form of the Rob Schneider body swap comedy film The Hot Chick. Now if you've ever seen a movie with Rob Schneider in the lead role, then you know how these things go. He starts off decent but for some reason always feels the need to delve into over exaggerated, low brow, offensive and just bad comedy. The hot chick does just that, but it's not as bad as you might think. Sure jokes fall flat more times than not, but Anna Faris, Rachel McAdams, and even Rob Schneider when he's not trying too hard can be actually funny and emotional at times. You're probably wondering how Alexandra did, and after watching the movie, so am I. Sadly, Alex is underused. I think she did fine with what she had, but out of all the main characters, she's given the least personality and development. After the first act, it feels like she's just filling background space. The Hot Chick was filmed on a $34 million budget, and although it wasn't a huge success, it raked in a decent $54.6 million. Alexandra Holden would get a better role in the 2003 teen rom-com How to Deal, wherein she played Scarlett Smith, a teenager who finds out she's pregnant with her boyfriend's baby after he dies. Made on a modest budget of $16 million, the movie failed to turn a profit, only making back $14.3 million. Critics at the time gave it mostly negative reviews, but in my opinion, it was okay. The film has a problem with balancing the tone at times, it relies pretty heavily on movie logic and the way how they push Alexandra Holden's character to the side in the story sometimes felt weird. But even so, the acting is good all around and the film has genuine scenes of good humor and drama. Alexandra's last film of 2003, in my opinion, gave her the best role of her career. That movie is Dead End. It's about a dysfunctional family who find themselves victims to the horrors of a never-ending road. Dead End provides the very rare occasion of Alexandra being in the lead role, and she does a really good job with it, because she's finally given the circumstances where she can show how great of an actress she is. She's surrounded by a great cast, and overall Dead End is a solid horror flick. The film got majority positive reviews from critics, and although it wasn't released in theaters, at least not in the United States, it was a massive success on home video, earning $77 million from DVD sales alone. Unfortunately, Alexandra Holden hasn't had a substantial role in a wide release theatrical film since 2003. She's kept busy over the years with numerous small films and plenty of guest starring roles on television, 
but she hasn't appeared in a film or show since 2015. In conclusion, Alexandra Holden deserved better roles, especially around the peak of her career in the early 2000s. She's beautiful and talented, but like many other actresses with the same attributes, she just didn't make it. It's sad, but that's just how the business goes sometimes. Thank you, Alexandra Holden, for your contribution to film history, and I hope you're doing great wherever you are, as myself and others enjoy your performances for years to come. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to know when I upload next. This has been Andre Darius, and I'll see you all next time. God bless.